So it all started when I was shopping for some RAM on eBay. My computer was running much slower with the new Windows 11 update because I was running it on an unsupported processor and I was looking to upgrade to around 32 gigabytes of RAM. Um, after looking, I couldn't really find any good deals on RAM. However, I kept coming across these MacBook listings. Now, now the computers that I was looking at were like newer MacBook Pros that were selling uh, anywhere in the neighborhood from like 50 to $200. Um, however, they were obviously for parts. Um, they, they were newer MacBook Pros uh, around like 2019 and 2020 that were just, just very, very cheap. Uh, they did have a lot wrong with them and I, I wasn't really interested in those. However, this did get me thinking. Could somebody with a little bit of skill, like me, take one and fix one up and then sell it for a, an astronomical profit? After all, even older 2009 MacBook Pros are still selling for hundreds of dollars on like Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. So I set out on my goal to buy a computer just like this and fix it up. Now the listing I chose was not one, but two computers. Uh, they, they were two, uh, 2012 or 2013. The buyer was not too clear on that. Uh, they, were t they were two MacBook Pros, 13 inch MacBook Pros. The glass on both units seemed to be completely intact, um, which those alone will go for $100. Um, and I ended up placing a couple of bids on the auction and a couple of bids on other auctions, but I ended up winning this auction for only like $45. In my opinion, this was a great deal because even if the computers themselves did not work, the displays alone would be worth a lot of money. Now, with as with all eBay products, it's now time to play the waiting game. Is it going to be shipped in a day or is it going to be shipped in a month? You never know with eBay. Uh, however, these MacBooks did arrive uh, right on time. The packaging that they came in was interesting to say the least. They were packaged in an uh, old newspaper that had been painted on, kind of like if you do like a spray painting project, you use newspaper. Um, however, they, that's what they used for the packaging. And the MacBooks themselves were just taped together with masking tape, kind of haphazardly. And it did take me a solid 10 minutes to get all of the tape off. Despite this uh, rather janky packaging, the MacBooks seem to have arrived completely undamaged. Or so I could tell, because these MacBooks are really beat up. The bottom cover of one is just completely gone. Meanwhile, the bottom cover of the other one uh, was loose, kind of just floating around in the packaging. And around all of the screw holes, it had these dents, these inward dents, as if somebody tried to like pry it open with a screwdriver. Um, it really did seem like somebody disassembled the back of both of these without knowing what they were doing. Neither unit had hard drives, however one unit did have a broken SATA cable, uh, which was really going to complicate things later. Both units did have their motherboards, and both units did have their RAM. However, one unit was missing the fan grill, which is actually a pretty important piece because the MacBook will thermal throttle without it. Anyways, now let's get on to fixing these MacBooks. So, I purchased an SSD for this project. It was a 120GB uh, NetAck branded SSD. However, it might just be any other generic eBay SSD. I do not know if it is any sort of cash, but because I do intend to sell these, um, I, I don't really care if it is cash. Next, I had to install an operating system on the SSD, which took quite a bit, mainly because my new MacBook Pro, uh, which is only like a couple years old, wouldn't even run the old Yosemite installer. So what, ended, what I ended up having to do was run my old iMac, which has like a, a 5,000 RPM hard drive. I had to run that installer on that iMac, and then I was able to get a flash drive with Yosemite on it. So for whatever reason, the first time I tried to install the operating system, the computer did not even turn on. So what ended up being the issue was that the bottom RAM stick, so these computers have uh, stacked RAM sticks, the bottom RAM stick was unseated. And I have a feeling that this is the whole reason why these were sold for scrap, as you will see later. So after I reseated the bottom RAM stick, I checked the other unit, and the other unit also had a unseated bottom RAM stick. So after I reseated the bottom RAM stick on the first unit, uh, I plugged the SSD in and I was able to install uh, macOS Yosemite onto the machine. Upon getting into the operating system, it seemed pretty responsive. I was able to do some basic web browsing, able to watch uh, like 1080p YouTube videos, and I was able to like write some Word documents. Um, and when I went to About This Mac, which will show all system information for macOS, uh, it turns out that this was a, uh, I, I believe it was a mid-2011 um, MacBook Pro 13 inch with 4 gigabytes of RAM in the terrible, terrible 384 megabytes of video memory. 
Um, so this was definitely a lower end base model MacBook Pro back in 2013, and it hasn't particularly scaled well. At this point, I was pretty excited that I actually did get a MacBook Pro working, um, because at the, uh, because up to this point, I was just assuming that these were just going to be scrap and that I was going to have to part them out. Um, however, I was happy that this one was working. The next thing I did was I actually wanted to test the battery, which had 470 something cycles, which is pretty good for that uh, age of battery. However, the battery did say that it needed service, um, which my new MacBook Pro also says it needs service. It does not need service. My new MacBook Pro will last all day. So I'm not too confident on that needing service um, requirement by Mac OS. Uh, so what I did was I, sh I charged the computer fully. I took it to school for a day and I used it for a full day doing all my classwork and everything i use my computer basically in every single uh block of the day um and it it lasted basically the whole day i had to like plug in at the very end of the day this battery performance was probably what i would expect out of a higher tdp chip on a lower capacity battery um so i was pretty confident that this would sell with no issues in the future so at this point, I had a fully working MacBook Pro with whatever it was, four gigabytes of RAM uh, and okay graphics. Um, however, there was the other MacBook Pro. Uh, so all I needed to do with this one theoretically was swap the SSD into the other one and fire it up and do about this Mac. However, this is the one that had the SATA cable literally chewed off for some reason. I don't understand how you can like rip the end of a SATA cable off. These are like, like very strong metal plastic SATA cables. Anyways, what I did was I swapped the SATA cable from the first unit into the second unit. Uh, there's just a little bit of adhesive that you kind of have to rip off um, along with uh, some some screws for the hard shift indicator light. And then I just swapped it into the other one doing the same uh, removal for the old broken SATA cable. Um, and I plugged the SSD in, fired it right up. And as it turns out, this one was a much newer uh, 2012. I believe, I believe it was a mid 2012. Uh, MacBook Pro 15 inch. It had a higher spec core i5 processor. Again, four gigabytes of RAM, but this was actually higher speed memory. And this one actually had the one and a half gigabytes Intel 4000 series graphics, which is actually the same graphics that they used in the 15 inch 2016 Touch Bar MacBook Pro. Meaning that this unit, with the exception of the RAM, was basically a maxed out unit for the 13 inch. Now there was one small issue with this otherwise great unit, it, the battery. This battery was listed as a, as a repair or replace condition with over nine, with almost 900 cycles on it. So what I ended up doing, because I really wanted to sell the higher end MacBook Pro, because I know that it would sell better and for much more money, was I swapped the first battery into the second unit. So now the second unit had a 400 and whatever cycle battery, um, and then now is time to choose the fate of the first unit. So what I ended up doing was I ended up just completely disassembling it um, into separate parts. I ended up taking pictures and they are currently up for eBay as an auction. So with the first MacBook up on eBay, it was now time to determine what I'm gonna do with the second one. So for a couple of days, I actually lended the MacBook out to a friend because for whatever reason, the, the school's Chromebook VLAN was broken. For, uh, for some users. So I actually lended it out to a friend for a couple of days um, just to test it out, make sure that it was like reliable and everything, which it was perfectly reliable for like schoolwork and everything like that. However, that was a week ago. And since then I've actually been doing something a little bit more interesting with this machine. So I actually have a, a, a version of Linux called Kali Linux loaded up on the machine. Um, it's a it's a penetration testing for networking engineers. Uh, I'm a CCNA student, obviously. Um, so this is kind of the perfect operating system for me, and I've been doing various sorts of uh, trolling, um, and I've also been testing out uh, network, network security and stuff like that. I do have a, uh, an old Layer 3 switch over there that I've been kind of, um, there is actually a uh, type of uh, uh, man in the middle or DDoS attack called a uh, Mac off tool. Uh, it basically floods the MAC address of a switch to the point that it just blasts uh, uh, frames out of all ports. Um, which is which is kind of hilarious to watch if you just go in Wireshark. It, that's a rant for another time. Anyways, so as of right now, um, the parts that I have up on eBay are currently for sale, and I've been using this computer pretty much every day for various purposes. So overall, this was a very very good uh, experience overall. Um, I I do think that I could have lost some money here um, if my listing that I got just happened to be completely dead. Um, however, I did take the risk, and I, I'm going to end up getting rewarded. 
um, I should be able to make a good at least $150 profit off of this whole thing. And even if I don't end up selling uh, this machine and I, I keep this as like a Linux computer, um, I will still make around like a $50 profit off of this whole thing and get a computer out of it, which I think is pretty good. So that begs the question, should you, a regular consumer, go out and try to flip one of these shady eBay listings? I would personally advise against it unless you're really comfortable working inside of uh, MacBooks or computers in general. Uh, MacBooks are much more difficult to, to work on um, than Windows computers, mainly just because they're very proprietary in all of their components. I mean, iFixit has literally thousands and thousands of, of tutorials on how to fix uh, Apple products, which makes tearing these down a lot easier than it would be otherwise, because MacBooks are very, very proprietary. Um, and, and even older ones are still very, very proprietary, because Apple has always kind of been uh, more integrated than uh, Windows, than, uh, like Windows manufacturers. But overall, would I recommend it? Uh, yeah, I would recommend it. It's It was a fun experience, and I did make, get to make a video out of it, um, so I, I think that was pretty good. Uh, anyways, I'm probably going to be uh, doing a video on various network attacks using this very laptop, or I might I have another Rogue uh, AP that I could use, but I'm going to be doing a video on various network attacks pretty soon. Um, so uh, yeah, stay tuned for that if you're interested in network security. Um, otherwise, thank you for watching, and I'll uh, see you next time.